All right, welcome back to Contrarians, everybody. We've got a, a, another interesting episode for you. So um, today I've got Martin as my co-host. Hello, Martin, how are you? Doing fine, looking forward to this. So we're actually going back to our Build a Bad Album series. Um, this is our 10th episode that Martin and I are gonna be hosting today. And the idea of this kind of came from looking at all these bands, re-releasing all their material, um, all the uh, the remixes and the remasters and the compilations and the deluxe box sets and all this stuff. Like a lot of these legacy bands are, are putting out stuff and um, going back to the well and re-releasing all this music over and over again for us to enjoy. So with all these compilations and best ofs, we thought, wouldn't it be interesting if a band said, OK, you want all of our best material? Well, here, how about a worst of album? Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do was go back with the bands that we love and try to do an exercise of let's come up with a group of songs that a band might use for a worst of album compilation for anybody who's a massive fan of the band. Here's our worst stuff if you want to hear it, right? So this is what we're doing today. We're actually going to be doing Black Sabbath, which is a band we both love, um, Innovators in Heavy Metal. Uh, and we're going to be sticking with the 70s. So all of the Ozzy catalog, excluding 13. So today... The album that we're going to be building is called Cabbage Bloody Cabbage, the worst of Black Sabbath in the 70s. So I'm going to throw it over to Martin to give us his first song, track one on side one. So take it away. Yeah, Martin. Thanks, Marco. Yeah. So obviously we we love we both love Sabbath. This is one of my favorite bands of all time. It's pretty it's a pretty tough exercise to do, especially when you're looking at the 70s stuff. So we each got five songs um, doing a, you know, traditional side one, side two minus side one uh, today. And uh, I'm going with Evil Woman off of this album, off of Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. It's not on all copies of it. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, my uh, in North America, we we uh, we didn't get Evil Woman. The Evil Woman came on the UK copy. It's a Crow cover. It's a cover of a band called Crow. Um, and uh, I, I just uh, I, I don't like the the um, the fact that it's sort of a, a standard sort of gallop that Sabbath does better on their own uh, originals. Uh, it is a cover. It's got a hint of a bluesy structure to it. Uh, I find the um, I find the chorus of it sort of juvenile with the evil woman. Don't you play your games with me? That that thing going. Um, so even though it's a heavy song, um, I, I this is almost like a tribute to Sabbath that I'm picking a cover and spoiler alert. I've actually got another cover later on uh, on this. So uh, so there you go. That's my side one track one. Um, second track may be a bit of a surprise. Uh, I'm going with Fairies Wear Boots from Paranoid. Um, I've always kind of had it in for this song. It's it's my least favorite song on this album, including, you know, even the likes of Planet Caravan, of course, is on here as well. But um, this is always the one that I've uh, I've never liked that sort of um that sort of uh, what would you call it? Almost like a um, almost like a like a half shuffle, half gallopy riff um, that recurs throughout the song. And um, it's just it's just always there. There's there's a couple other little parts, but not neither of those are all that uh, exciting either. I don't think the vocal melody on top of it is that great either. So this one to me. It always had a little bit of that jammy quality that you get on the debut album. So there's a there's a little bit of a. You know, who, who knows? Uh, that's, I know it's obviously one of the more popular songs, but uh, then I'm going with Who Are You from this album. So Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, uh, pretty much my second or third favorite Sabbath album. Um, you know, Sabotage is my favorite. Um, who Are You is uh, is actually a pretty decent song. It's, it, of the five I have on here, it's the one I kind of wanted on here the least, but um, it it's just traditionally always been one that's that's bothered me on this record. Obviously, it's sort of the um, it's it's the mellowest or slowest or, you know, combined with, say, looking for today, I suppose, uh, on here as well. But it's um, it's always depressed me. It's always been kind of a depressing song. Um, you know, it's got that eerie synthesizer thing going and Ozzy's, Ozzy's vocal melody and performance is pretty good on this. But it's definitely a sloggy sort of song. It's not one of the up tempo heavy ones on it. It's kind of experimental. It's OK, um, but uh, but I wanted to put it on there almost for tradition because I've always kind of had it in for that song as well. Um, my fourth track, I'm going with Breakout 
from Never Say Die. Um, this is one of the weirdest things they ever did. Uh, you know, I consider it their kraut rock song. Uh, it's got a big horn arrangement in it. It's an instrumental. Um, it's slow. It's just a very strange sort of thing to, to put on here. It's, it's kind of easy pickings, I know. Um, but yeah, so we're going with Warning. And then, I mean, sorry, we're going with Breakout. And now we're going with Warning uh, from Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. It's not the Warning. It's just Warning. Uh, and it's all mixed in with... Um, um, a bit of finger and sleeping village it's complicated you know the way the way the tracks are broken out on the back here but but uh but warning uh is the second cover that i picked this is ainsley bun uh ainsley dunbar retaliation um it's just uh just a jammy sort of you know bluesy jammy some other parts tony's just it, it's almost like they're all they're trying out riffs all over this thing and and a lot of frankly on on this album but yeah I, it's it's always the one again traditionally since i was a kid it's always the one we like the least but uh but there's there's um testimony i guess we're gonna have to go with the single edit because it's super long um and you know we, we don't like cheating on these sides that we put together so i'll go with warren single edit if there's such a thing um but uh yeah so i've got two covers out of my five so i don't know marco what do you what do you think of that uh, to, to kick off uh i pretty much agree with most of your list like i don't mind seeing any most of those songs except for he's wear boots i'm surprised that that's there because that's one of my top black sabbath songs i think okay. um maybe my top 10 if not top five uh just i just love that tune the energy of it the riff um but surprisingly like evil woman is one like i had every single black sabbath album um well into the 80s and uh, that was one that i didn't even know existed for a long time and when i found it i was not really um i have not really gone out of my way much to listen to it because it wasn't on the version that i had yeah and uh so i kind of agree with you there with evil woman so obviously they kind of maybe knew that too because it didn't didn't appear on on at least a version i had um who are you i think it's interesting that sabbath bloody sabbath now i think is my favorite sabbath album i think it's kind of replaced volume four for certain reasons mm -hmm. and um in the context of sabbath bloody sabbath i don't mind who are you but it's not a song again i go out of my way to listen to i don't put it on playlists it's just i won't skip it if it's on sabbath bloody sabbath but yeah that i probably one of the weaker songs from my favorite sabbath album currently and they they change their children i guess but um breakout again i agree with you um i just think for an underrated sabbath album because i love never say die i think they could have if for an instrumental, I think they could have done something a little bit cooler, especially with what, what the band was doing in other areas of that album, the band performances and stuff like this. And then it's kind of, you know, if you're going to have an instrumental and you're not going to have Ozzy, who's a unique vocalist, sing on a track, like why not do something a little more fantastical or something? I don't know. I, I, I agree with you with Breakout. And then the same thing with Warning. I actually don't mind parts of that whole bit of finger and, behind the wall and warning like that whole like 11 12 minute thing the only thing is because it's like 11 12 minutes it's kind of hard to sit through the whole the whole thing it's a little bit too long i think mm -hmm. uh, i think if they just had the ainsley dunbar version just a you know what i mean like a, a regular three or four minute track um i would i because i like those the verses that ozzy sings like i like that kind of blues track but yeah i think the 12 minutes is a little too much for that okay, but i like that cool. first album all right well let's hear side two yeah well here's side two and then i have some uh some patreon comments too who've, who've commented and they voted on our songs as well so we'll hear from them as well so my my first track which is you know it's uh maybe a bit of a cop out but um my justification for picking it, i have a justification for picking it so my first track is fx which really is kind of like it, it's a prelude you know one of the patreon members pointed out like you know is that really fair to put that on the album I kind of think it is because a it's got a title it's a track it's like over a minute and a half and i don't mind stuff like orchid or fluff i actually kind of like those tracks so to me fx is just it's like nothing it's just like a nothing track i, I totally would skip that um in a heartbeat because it's just kind of some noises some like guitar i think tony's just it sounds to me like something Tony might have been recording as kind of like trying to come up with interesting ideas, like maybe a demo to something cool, but then they just used what he came up with anyways. Um, but it's not, it's, it's to me, it's a skip track. Totally. 
it's it's not interesting in any way. Uh, there's no redeemable factor for me for that song. Uh, the next track that I picked is from um, Technical Ecstasy. I pick Rock and Roll Doctor. Partly because I think technical technical ecstasy is such a cool, progressive, interesting album to have such a generic kind of rock and roll, you know, the lyrics being so um, like simple and like low hanging fruit is a term that you hear. Like, I, I feel like rock and roll doctor is kind of a disappointment on a really cool, weird album. Um, like even it doesn't even match the album cover. It doesn't match the theme. It doesn't match any of the other songs. So it in and itself, it's not the worst thing I've ever heard in my life, but just the way that it's presented on the album, I'm not a fan of Rock and Roll Doctor. Um, then I had this one's gonna, I think, cause some controversy too, because I know people like this track. The next uh, track that I have is off of Never Say Die, that's Swinging the Chain. My reason for putting this on is because I think, again, I mentioned this earlier, if you have such a unique, interesting vocalist like Ozzy, why? take a tune like that, which is a cool tune and have somebody sing it like Bill Ward, who doesn't have a very remarkable voice. He can pull it off. He can sing the track and stuff like this, but I feel like his voice is more generic where you have Ozzy, who's more of a, uh, a unique vocalist. And I just kind of thought it, it seemed like a throwaway to not have your lead singer sing a track on already like what an eight track album there's already a instrumental on there and you're giving a track to bill ward so now ozzy's only singing what like five or six tunes out of eight right so that was always a track that always kind of bothered me i guess more than the song itself because it is a cool song and bill does a decent job and i guess that's just my point of contention is you can have somebody do a decent job or you can have maybe ozzy do something cool on it he's he's ozzy the singer of black sabbath and interestingly i don't mind um it's all right as much as uh, swinging the chain. I kind of like that they gave Bill that track, but this one kind of is like, all right, we were going back to the well with the Bill thing again. Um, my next track, I don't have issues with with Sabbath ballads in particular because they're usually pretty cool and dark. Um, but I put She's Gone as my number four. And the reason that I put that, and I know some people like this tune because of the it, uh, performances and stuff on it. And I like Planet Caravan and I like Solitude and I like Changes. Um, like Caravan's got a sick instrumentation and like cool lyrics and Solitude is haunting and Changes has that hook on it. You know, like I just feel like She's Gone is a ballad that's missing a hook. And I always feel like there's something incomplete about it because of that. It almost feels to me like the chorus just kind of stops right before the hook. You know, like there's something missing. And for some reason, She's Gone has never been a favorite ballad of mine. It's my, my least favorite ballad of the uh, Sabbath in the 70s. My last track I'm going with, probably the easiest choice out of all of 70s Sabbath, is Am I Going Insane? It's It's got that weird title, first of all, so Am I Going Insane, brackets, radio. I don't know what that means. I've never figured out what that means. I don't know if you could explain that I'll to explain me. it to you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's just, it's kind of like a, a weird, like not very, uh, kind of like Rock and Roll Doctor. It has such a weird place on sabotage like it doesn't make any sense why it's there it doesn't fit in with the rest of the album it's kind of like this weird quirky kind of commercial thing um is there aspects of it that i possibly could enjoy like yeah i guess so but i mean like overall i just find like that's probably the worst track out of all 70 sabbath in my opinion cool well okay i'll, I'll give you my comments quickly and then i, I definitely want to hear what the patreons have to say on this um yeah so, um so FX, FX is like a Van Halen song, right? I mean, Van Halen did this like five or six times, right? Um, Cathedral and all those sorts of things. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's definitely kind of just to throw away a little little, you know. And maybe because you put FX on there, we can move my warning on to side two, and we can uh, level out the sides a little bit because it's obviously a little short one, right? Um, Rock and Roll Doctor, I totally agree with. Um, it's it's always one that bothered me on there. Um, you know, when when I have this big debate, people people about Sabbath being the first band, you know, to invent heavy metal because they're getting rid of the blues. They're, they're leaving blues idioms, you know, and by the way, my, my track, the warning is, is one of the closest they have to the blues here. They are. This is like the first time since pretty much the debut that they did boogie woogie bluesy rock. Right. Um, 
So I always have to bring this one up again and, you know, and say, well, I guess in the 70s, they even did it again way later up into 1976. So I agree with you. And and I don't like that chorus and that title. And like, like I like the way you put it, that it doesn't really match what's going on. Uh, it's got that great intro, though. Right. That Geronimo riff. Right. That that thing where, uh, you know, the, the big sort of um, build up to it. And then and then it goes into cowbell and the, the little rock and rollsy thing. Right. Um Swing of the Chain, I love to death. Um, that one I was horrified to see on here. So we each got one of those. But I, I love I love the riff. I love Bill's vocal. I love that riff that comes in later on on it too. I think it's a cool, daring, uh, interesting heavy metal song. It's it fits the progginess of the album. Um, so I'm I'm fine with it. About it's always been probably top ten uh, Sabbath song for me. She's gone. I I agree that something's missing there. But to me, what I've always thought was missing is the drums right um you know and i compare it to something like you won't change me which feels like a ballad but i love you won't change me to death on that album but but it's it's a heavy ballad it's a quote unquote almost like a power ballad but it's a cool dirge um but yeah if, if you break it down that song is uh that song is really written like a ballad but they throw the whole band on it so it, it feels it feels cooler and more finished than than She's gone. Now, am I going insane? I totally agree. It's always one that bothered me. Uh, and when we were kids, what bothered us the most was that that vocal melody to it. You know, that that weird classical little it all. It always reminded me a little bit of Monty Python and like the killer rabbit thing. I don't know. It just it's just silly sounding. Right. Um, the, the, the melodies on it sounds kind of like uh, demented children's music. Right. Um, and that and that subtitle radio. Um, I had it. I think it was Geezer who explained it to me that it's uh, it's basically um, Cockney slang, uh, Cockney rhyming slang, because uh, there was a store that they would go to uh, to like get gear and stuff in Birmingham called Radio Rental. So Cockney uh, rhyming slang, uh, I guess Radio Rental rhymes with mental. So it's uh, am I going insane? Mental. Um, but but you go you go the step beyond and use the other word that that is part of it radio rental so they they put radio in there pretty bizarre eh <laughs> yeah so obscure, uh, for sure yeah so there you go um yeah what what do the patreons have to say uh okay so we have Don saying breakout if the members of Chicago Transit Authority had been lobotomized and forced quaaludes force fed quaaludes this is the song they would have made. Yeah. Uh, Pontus responds, funnily enough, it's the heaviest riff on that album. Peter Jones says, fairies wear boots. Okay, now we are getting silly. Don says, insane, that is a classic. She's responding to Peter. Uh, Butch says, FX is just a prelude. I'm not sure that should really count. Uh, Peter says, agreed. Reed agrees with me, though, and says, um, it has a title. It's nearly as long as some of the singles from the early 60s. It definitely counts and stinks fact that tony was so coked out of his mind that he thought including it is a good idea is well i guess on an album dedicated to the coca-cola factory it's not a surprise and then david says who are you i love synths and sabbath does anyone remember that grading synth jingle they play during the shamrock mask commercials in halloween three season of the witch the keyboards here come off that obnoxiously simple to me and then in our voting the only two songs that did not get a vote were warning and swinging the chain And our lead single, our A-side for the worst um, coming off of this album would be Rock and Roll Doctor, which had 27% of the vote. And our B-side is actually a tie for FX and Am I Going Insane? Hmm. So everything else got a vote except for Swinging the Chain and Warning were the only two that did not get a vote. You could just put FX and Am I Going Insane on there, right? Make yeah. It a, make it a make it a the intro <laughs> to Am I make Going it Insane. It garbage. makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you throw the record right out the window after. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Cabbage, bloody cabbage. Uh, worst Black Sabbath seventies. Worst of the seventies of Black Sabbath. Cabbage, bloody cabbage. Let us know in the comments. Like, would you buy this album if you were a collector? Collector and a completionist, you probably would. But um, just in general, like, do you like the songs on this album? Was there a song from the 70s that we missed? Is there a band you want to see us do next? Uh, Let us know in the comments. What did we get wrong? Was there a song on here that you love? And would you buy it if we included a cool new wave of British heavy metal Black Sabbath patch in with it? Yeah, absolutely. Some cool extras. (laughs) Um, Let us know in the comments. And uh, 
like subscribe we have a patreon where you can vote on these things as well and comment on these things and have your voice heard and also uh, we we do lots of panels where folks can participate and we do music trivias we have a lot of fun and games on the patreon so if you want to join our cool little club uh, and support us as well um, you can join us on patreon or if you just want to give us a like and subscribe that helps too and we'll see you next time